cute. <laughs> the return of the zucchini. Can you believe it? I know. It's so hard to believe. <laughs> uh, I, I guess we should introduce we, ourselves, yes. right? I, I'm Chris Fenimore. And I'm Nancy Polinski. And 20, 20 years, years ago, <laughs> we were standing not in a kitchen. I think we had like a folding table. Uh. And we didn't have anything to cook with. Uh, but we did have a bunch of zucchini uh, that I had accumulated from my garden. And Nancy had gone out and done a, a spot uh, asking people for their recipes, and the recipes came in, and a tradition was started with that one program, a tradition of sharing the recipes uh, that you and your families enjoy, um, people who uh, got to share them with their friends and neighbors, <laughs> and all in the process of the support of programming here at WQED. It has been a terrific 20 years. And I just can't believe that much time has gone by, Nancy. I, I can't either. I've enjoyed every minute of being in the kitchen with you. <laughs> I've enjoyed all the recipes that we've gotten from so many folks at home who have become part of the WQED family by sending in their recipes. And certainly, I remember that zucchini show like yesterday. You sent me to, <laughs> somebody sent me down to a farmer's market to yes. ask people, you know, what what uh, do you do with zucchinis? What do you hear? And we, we talked to them. And we, yeah, they, they gave us their suggestions for zucchinis. Then we went on the air and said, okay, so what do you do with your zucchini? <laughs> <laughs> and as you said, these recipes, oh, my God, look at that, that, that the shoulder pads, the earrings. It was so a, it was early 90s. Anyway, that was uh, the original promo that we did, inviting people. And now, of course, we're very high tech. We have a real kitchen. And we've got, you know, stove and, and water. And, and we still have recipes that come just pouring in. And we're going to share them with you today, starting with yes. one that... From one of your favorite guests, I know. Yes, I know. I <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who wasn't even here when we did the first ago. show. Right. My son, Joe. There, there he is. <laughs> Joe's been on the show. Uh, starting when you were uh, about 18 months old, we had Joe on the show, and we put him up onto a, a stool, and he's been wreaking havoc in the kitchen oh, ever since. He was cute back then. He's even cuter today. <laughs> I remember that. I remember seeing that show re recorded later, and you had me in a full-sized apron, despite being 18 <laughs> yes, months. So the apron and on the stool, you picked the... me up, and it was just like, Whoa. Whoa. All apron he was. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to leave you two men to the kitchen. I'll be back later on. Okay. I can't wait to taste what you're making. Right. <laughs> Happy cooking. Thank you, Nancy. All right, now here we are, uh, once again in the kitchen, yeah. and we're making a recipe that is actually not mine, but it is a Fenimore recipe. It comes from my cousin, Lisa Fenimore, who happens to be a real chef in Vermont. And yeah. I have never met my cousin. She's part of the Fenimore family that was from New Jersey. Um, but she sent a recipe for a frittata, and you know that we eat frittatas. Yeah. We're, fr we're frittata That's people. Um, and we make all different varieties of them. I have never used zucchini in a fr frittata. So no. this is Lisa Fenimore's, Chef Lisa Fenimore's zucchini frittata. The first thing, uh, uh, it, well, it's a, what she calls it, a midsummer? Um, yes, yes midsummer mid frittata. frittata. And it uses uh, a great ingredient. Uh, it's not an Italian ingredient, but it's a very flavorful ingredient, chorizo, which is a, a flavored sausage that is actually already, it's not raw, it's cooked. And, um, and I'm just going to put some of this in a pan to get it started. I want to put it into a pretty, you know, about a, an eighth of an inch dice so that the pieces are not uh, so big. As always, it's a shame that those of you watching can't smell this chorizo because it, it's one of those things where I, I wouldn't care what else you put in this frittata. <laughs> Once I smelled that cooking, I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't be bothered by any other ingredient. <laughs> All right. Now, what we need to do is, obviously, we gotta, we got to break a few eggs. Yep. Um, so if you would start by putting, uh, cracking four eggs in the pan while mm -hmm. I um, dice up some, Ooh. whoop, you got that? Got it. All right. Save. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be uh, dicing up some zucchini. And again, I want to put it into pieces that are similar to the size of the uh, chorizo that we've used. And um, that way, all of the pieces will be similar, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, you're putting um, four eggs, yep. four whole eggs. Got them. And the, in the recipe, it calls for a splash of water in, in the, uh, to, to beat up with the eggs. And I have a feeling 
that that helps it uh, to sort of souffle. So if you would put just a little touch of water in there. Okay. We actually have running water in this kitchen. I know. Hard to imagine that you managed a show without it. Well, what we did was, uh, back in those days, was that we would have the ingredients ready, and then we would say, you put this in a bowl, you do that and everything, but then we wouldn't actually cook it. We would have a finished <laughs> one that we brought from home. So That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's the... Uh, mm. <laughs> that, that really... It has a wonderful smoky, uh, yeah. garlicky kind of uh, aroma and um, sort of a spicy smell. It is. It's, you can tell right away that there's going to be a lot of flavor in that. Okay. Now, here, <laughs> here's one of those things. My cousin, who is actually a trained chef and a culinary instructor, mm -hmm. um, she makes her frittata in a very different way. She mixes all of these ingredients and puts them, puts the eggs right into the pan, cooks it on one side, and then she puts it in the oven, which is a pretty standard way to make a frittata. And those are the instructions that are on there. I am, however, uh, you know, I'm a, little, I, I'm a little strange. And um, so I do things uh, a little differently. So that was, uh, you know, about equal parts, about a half a cup of chorizo and a half a cup of the zucchini. You can switch over now and just keep giving this a stir, because she says to okay. give that a... You can, yeah. Put that in the sink? Yeah. I don't think we're going to need that, no. Okay. Um, so if you would come over here and take care of that, because that chorizo will, will cook very quickly, and I want to make sure it doesn't burn, but I do want to get it nice and well cooked. And I'm going to uh, chop a small onion. Uh, actually, I didn't have a small onion, uh, so I used a um, quarter of a large onion. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put that in there. Great. Get that. And then, you know, seasonal cooking. The recipe calls for a garlic scape. I don't know if you've seen these. They look like spring onions or uh, scallions, uh, whatever you call these, but they're not. They're, they're like the, the stalk of a, of a uh, garlic plant, and um, we, we couldn't get those in this season. So I'm just going to use a little scallion uh, to give another flavor. It already has onion. I have to tell you, mixing this up right now, I feel like I, I could eat this just the way <laughs> just it is. Just spoon it out into a plate, right? Yeah. All right. Chorizo, onion, and zucchini. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right. Let me put this in here. We're going to get that going. And while that is finishing, I'm going to uh, mince a little bit of fresh basil that mm -hmm. we're going to use as a garnish for the top of this. And you know, it's just, it's an amazing... That came aroma. right out of our garden. Just this morning. We just yep. picked it this morning. Almost came here without it. Um, Almost. Thank goodness Mom was on the ball. She yep. said, what about that basil? I thought you had basil. Um, I'm just going to cut a little chiffonade of that. This is really for the top when it's all done. Okay. So, there it is. Yeah. Looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this all into the egg, which is different. Lisa instead pours the egg into the pan. So you want to mix the ingredients. I like the, with the ingredients egg. mixed a little bit differently with the egg. Okay. And once I get them with all the egg touching, then I pour it back in the pan. And I put the lid on it. You want to do that. And I let that cook for, you know, a minute or two. Well, here you can, uh, I'm going to save this. Uh, sure. Just cook it for a minute or two until the, you can see the egg has set on the bottom and, uh, and a little bit set on the top. It doesn't have to be completely firm on the top yet because we're going we're gonna to turn this. Um, now let me work on the rest of the garnish. <laughs> so here, here, here's another thing. Um, 
Her recipe, obviously, since she lives in Vermont, calls for cheddar cheese on the top. Got to be Vermont cheddar cheese, and uh, and I happen to have a great big piece of it in the refrigerator, so uh, that's what I'm going to uh, cut up to put on the top. And um, Vermont cheddar cheese is really got a wonderful tangy flavor to it. It's kind of mm -hmm. a crumbly consistency. It's unique. It's not like regular Wisconsin cheddar cheese. I don't know the Vermont cows are different or whatever uh, the situation is. Um, I'm going to put just one more little piece up there. Okay. Anybody watching who knows can email us, let us know. Yes, right. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, contented cows of Vermont. All right. So, so now you can see that the... I love the, the orange color that... That the, the, the chorizo impairs, it. yeah. I'm going to pour some of this out. Looks pretty thick. Yeah. I also see that the, um, the little bit of grease that came off the chorizo has nicely browned parts of the bottom. Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't used um, additional oil in this. Uh, the, oh. the recipe says you can put some uh, you know, olive oil or whatever in the bottom of the pan butter. Um, or butter, um, but um, this is the risky part. Alrighty. So there. So that's, that's how we do the frittata, you know, <laughs> Shea Fenimore, um, <laughs> Pittsburgh Fenimore. And then you just top it with a little bit of this beautiful Vermont cheddar cheese. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, Joe, if you would bring the, uh, the other frittata over here. Uh, mm -hmm. Careful, because it's just out of the oven. Kay. And I'm going to put a sprinkling of the, you can put it on the, right on the pan right here. Is that the hot pad? Yeah, you don't need the hot pad there. Okay. But just I didn't want you to grab the handle and go, Yo! yeah. All right. That would be bad. So then I put the lid on that, and that is going to uh, have a chance to uh, melt that cheese. I've actually turned the heat off, so you don't want the egg to get hard and crusty. Right, because there's just there's enough heat already there. All right. So this is from um, Lisa's method. Actually, this is not too hot. So get us some plates, and let me see if I can't serve up some of this. recipe. I know you're saying, don't be stingy, Dad. <laughs> it's all right. I'll, I'll have time after the segment. So in 20 years, what, what has been the good part and the bad part of these cooking shows as far as you're concerned? I, you know, <laughs> the, the good part is that I... You get to test get all to, the recipes. I get to <laughs> test all the recipes. I mean, beyond even just like, oh, I get to be on TV. No, I get to eat this food. I get to come in and I get to eat this. You know, over the years, so many people have uh, that come up to me, and they, they, uh, a, a common thing for them to say is, oh, I'd love to be on your show. And I say, well, you know, all of the cooks that we have are from people who submit recipes. So send a recipe, and they go, oh, no, I, I don't want to <laughs> cook. I just want to eat. Well, we haven't worked that out yet. Uh, maybe Sorry, one of these days. We don't days. need any help with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So give this a give this a whirl All and let's right. see what this is. This is the proof of the pudding, as they well, it's not pudding. It's a frittata. Oh man. Boy, there is nothing bad about that, Chef Lisa. You know, I may try your method of uh, putting this frittata. There's how, uh, this is how mine looks, if you get a little shot of that. Um, There's so many flavors yeah. going on. I love, you, you definitely taste the cheddar up front, but then you've got the, the nice spiciness of the chorizo. Mm -hmm. Though it's not too spicy. No, it's not. No, really? it's, it's it, not hot. It's, it, it's flavorful and spicy that way, yeah. but not, uh, it's, it's not sp hot, hot spicy. There's so, a little hints of the basil in there. All and the, good. And zucchini put to a great and flavorful purpose. Here's just one of the recipes in our brand new <laughs> Return of the Zucchini Cookbook. <laughs>